and welcome to the Matt Lagore Show, where we talk about entrepreneurism, business, inspiration, and purpose. When I was 12 years old, I started my life as an entrepreneur. I didn't know that I was doing that at the time, but that's when it started. And I delivered time in Newsweek magazines in my neighborhood uh, to various houses, and I made some money at it. Now, my purpose was not to be the greatest uh, magazine deliverer in the world. That was just my responsibility, was to make sure they got to the house on time. My purpose at 12 years old in junior high was to be popular. And popularity in junior high school meant having a good supply of bubble yum and bubblicious bubblegum. The more you had, the more popular you were. So the proceeds from my magazine route went to buying the gum. Now I learned two things very quickly. That once you ran out of gum, you ran out of popularity. And once you ran out of money, you ran out of gum. So it was kind of tough spending most of your proceeds on gum and popularity and seeing it go away so quickly. So it was a very valuable lesson to learn in junior high. And I was able to start applying it by the time I was 35. So it was a very good lesson. Unfortunately, it took me a while to learn it, but all jokes aside, uh, everybody needs a purpose. And uh, if you ever wake up in the morning and you feel somewhat like dreadful or depressed or sad, you're probably, your purpose is not very strong. And I've experienced that throughout my life from time to time, and I've realized that you have to change your purpose as time goes on. Now, sometimes I had a hard time kind of finding out what my purpose was or what to do. So I would ask people, I would ask people questions about what they did and what their purpose was and why they did what they do. And if I liked what they said, I would take on that purpose. I would steal it. Uh, it's not really stealing. It's just an idea. So I just would take that on at times. And sometimes I would just elaborate on it. So one of the uh, reasons for the Matt Lagore Show is to find purpose. It's one of the uh, ingredients of the Matt Lagore Show. So what I like to do is I like to have people on my show who I feel are up to good things, have a good purpose, uh, are an entrepreneur, uh, are, are very nice people. I like to have those people on my show. And today I have my guest on, uh, Abby Denaro. Abby Denaro of Denaro Chiropractic is my guest today. Abby. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. Oh, great. Um, so did I say that right? Is it Denaro Chiropractic? Yes. Okay. Yep. And tell us where you're located. So Denaro Chiropractic is at 350 Park Street in North Reading. It's unit number 106. Um, we can be reached at 978-664-1500. And we have a website, which is www.denarochiropractic.com. Awesome. Okay. And how long have you been uh, a chiropractor? I've been a chiropractor for four years. Um, when I graduated chiropractic school, I started my practice right up right here in North Reading and I've been there ever since. Oh, that's awesome. So um, now you're a doctor, right? Yes. A doctor of chiro 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 chiropractic. Chiropractic. Yep. Okay. That's awesome. And so what, what got you like inspired to be a chiropractor? It was actually uh, a personal experience with chiropractic that I had. Um, growing up, I got TMJ, which is pain in the jaw, clicking um, mm -hmm. of the jaw, and you can't quite open your mouth as wide as you should be able to. Um, I actually got it the day that they took my braces off when I was a kid. And um, my parents took me for about two years to all different dental specialists and had all kinds of retainers made and everything and nothing helped. My grandmother was the one who finally said, Abby, this is ridiculous. I'm taking you to, you to my chiropractor. And it took two weeks and all my jaw pain, the clicking, headaches, everything was gone. So it was at that moment that I realized how powerful chiropractic was and really made a huge difference in my life and lifestyle. And oh, that's a life experience. Yeah, exactly. Because that's a real burn to get your braces off finally uh -huh. and then not be able to open your jaw without it hurting. Yep. Because I see that a lot. I always see a lot, of, a lot of, you know, you see that more often than you realize people with TMJ. Yeah, and it's I, very common. Yeah, I never understood it. You know, so it really gets down to just aligning your jaw, your neck. What? Well, so for me, it was a couple different things. I had never been to a chiropractor um, and I had played sports and, and all kinds of stuff. So my neck was a little out of alignment. Um, so he worked on that a lot and then um, also worked on a lot of the muscles in and around the jaw as well, which really helped to 
let things relax and just go back to normal and balance mm -hmm. everything out. And so the combination of the two made a big difference. Do, do you hold a lot of tension in your job? I do, mm -hmm. as do most people, yeah. whether we realize it or not, whether we're stressed or just working or f focused on something, we tend to clench yeah. the jaw or just kind of hold a lot of tightness in yeah. there. Oh yeah, I do it. My mother used to always say that to me. She'd say, I can, why are you so tense? And I'm like, I'm not. She goes, I can tell you're clenching uh -huh. your jaw. I can see it. Yeah. You know, so you do, you hold a lot of tension in yep. different areas. And I hold a lot of tension in my neck too. Yep. Uh, Abby is also my chiropractor. I don't know if you notice, I'm much straighter than I was. <laughs> because I know, but seriously, you've helped a lot. You know, I was getting like, uh, one of the things that was happening was getting a lot of tingling in my fore, my, my hand, uh, my, down my forearm into the top of my hand. And I was just so, you know, I was like, oh, well, uh, carpal tunnel. Mm -hmm. All right, carpal tunnel. And so, you know, you started working on my neck and on my back. And, and then you mentioned that I should be massaging mm -hmm. this area of my forearm. And anytime I get it, I immediately massage it, yeah. either with my hand or sometimes I take something a little harder and it goes away. Yeah. Yeah, so we can get those kinds of symptoms. Um, what causes the tingling usually is a pinched nerve yep. somewhere. And the nerve can get pinched really anywhere along its pathway. So that nerve that goes to your hand, it comes out from your neck, goes all the way down through all the muscles and the bones, and then into the tips of the fingers. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it could be a pinched nerve coming right from the neck, it yeah. could be from the muscles up the top of the shoulders mm -hmm. or anywhere along the forearm. So what I like to do is always kind of, always start at the spine because that's where a lot of the, most people's problems actually do originate, mm -hmm. but really check the whole body and see where anything else may be inflamed or tight or out of alignment. Because it's all connected, right? It is. That song, the hip bones connected uh, yep. to those really was true, right? It is, yeah. <laughs> um, so how does one become a chiropractor? Like when you decided, how old were you then? You were like 13, 14 or 15? Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah, when I had so you saw system. the power of it. You had, yeah. a, you had an experience, all yeah. right? So that kind of led you in that direction. But how do you become a chiropractor? Well, a lot of schooling. Yeah. So um, I went to UMass Lowell and got my bachelor's in exercise physiology, which is kind of their pre-physical therapy program. Um, and then after that, once I got my bachelor's, I went on to chiropractic school, which is another three and a half years. Um, so I did that at Palmer Chiropractic yep. mm -hmm. out in San Jose, California. Mm -hmm. So how many years total? Um, seven and a half. Seven and a half years. Okay. Yep. And you become a doctor of chiropractic. Yeah. All right. So now um, a lot of people, I know you've heard this, they say, oh, that's not a real doctor, right? Right. They always, I always hear that, you know, mm -hmm. and you know, when I was young, I kind of believed that because my parents, well, you didn't go see a real doctor. Uh -huh. And, but I'd be like, no, it feels good. I feel better. Yeah. Why is there that, that, like that myth? Well, I think probably really what it comes down to is the fact, and this is just my opinion, people might have other opinions, but I think that maybe because we don't prescribe medications. Mm -hmm. So the fact that you leave a chiropractor's office without a prescription slip and mm -hmm. you don't go to the pharmacy right after. Mm -hmm. um, I think is what some people differentiate real doctor versus fake doctor. Yeah. Um, but in my opinion, no, I think it's a great thing. That's a, no, but that's a, good, that's a good point. Like it doesn't fit the mold. Right. The mold of like I go to the doctor, uh, he looks at me, he bangs on my knee right? Mm -hmm. He puts a stethoscope on me and he says, okay, breathe in. All right. So, okay, great. Um, you know what? I'm going to prescribe something for you. All right. Mm -hmm. You don't feel good. And you walk out and you go, oh, good. He checked me out. He found the problem and he gave me my medicine. Yeah. Not that that doesn't apply and it doesn't right. work, but, but that's a mold that we've grown into like believing mm -hmm. that that's what a doctor does. Right. You know, I, I had uh, one of my first interviews, I had a doctor, MD, uh, he's, uh, he works at the uh, Melrose Wakefield Hospital. He's the chief of um, uh, gynecology, mm -hmm. all right? So he's an OBGYN, mm -hmm. right? He, was a, he prescribed uh, medications and everything, but then at some point in his career, he decided that he needed to, he didn't see his patients progressing, so he needed to find another alternative. Mm -hmm. So he works with alternative medicines, okay. uh, eating, health, exercise he he he, he uh, has changed like his um, his format his mm -hmm. format so to speak so 
there's an MD, yeah. you know, big time MD. You know, you don't get that position uh, in a hospital without having some real, you know, some cred. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he believes that there's more to medicine or more to uh, doctoring than just yeah. prescribing prescriptions yeah. and pharmaceuticals. So. And that's true. I think that's the way that um, at least some clinics are going is more integrative. So, you know, there are some larger clinics now that do have medical doctors, but there's also chiropractors and acupuncturists and physical therapists in there, too, because... Sometimes you need more than just one mm -hmm. opinion or one treatment. Yeah. So now, can you prescribe? No. No, you can't. No. So, so like if you need a prescription, you got to go see your, your uh, primary. primary. Okay. Yeah. Um, now, is there cases where you have somebody come in and you're like, you need to go see your primary too? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I try to do, I'll do as much as I can. Yeah. Um, and most people will come in with some kind of complaints that is, strictly muscular or skeletal. Mm -hmm. um, and in those instances, I'm confident that just the chiropractic will do. Yeah, right. um, it's really if, they're, if they were in an accident or yeah. something and mm -hmm. maybe they need an x-ray or something like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. um, or if it's more of a... So, so you may, you may yeah. or you may not. You're going to do what you can do first. Yep. And, but if it's, more, if it's something very serious like that, they may have to go see a Exactly, primary. yeah. But in most cases... Your, 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 um, your office, your practice can handle, handle the situation. Right? Yeah. yeah okay. So far, knock on wood. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you're doing well. Good. You're doing well. You have a beautiful office. Thank you. Um, you know, behind us is going to be pictures of it, or they might be right now. You know, you provided some pictures. We're going to show uh, your practice in action. Mm -hmm. Now, I noticed you were working on a baby. Yep. So that is actually, um, I will work with everybody and anybody, um, all, all ages and sizes. Mm -hmm. Um, but my specialty is prenatal care yeah. and pediatric care. Yeah. So prenatal before you have the baby, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So like yep, pregnant women. Yeah. All right. And then, um, then afterwards, what was the other one? Prenatal? The pediatric. Pediatric. So that's, so, that's children or babies. Yeah. Right? yeah. Yeah. So a lot of people don't realize that you can be adjusted when you're pregnant and you can be adjusted if you are a child, so mm -hmm. newborn mm -hmm. and up. Mm -hmm. um, and actually when I was going to school, to chiropractic school, I went in thinking that I wanted to be more of a sports chiropractor, work more with athletes. Mm -hmm. um, and I went to a couple seminars on prenatal and pediatric care just to kind of expand my, my knowledge. Mm -hmm. and it completely blew me away about how much they really need chiropractic care and how few people actually realize that it is important um, for pregnancy. It can be very helpful, of course, for back pain and posture mm -hmm. changes mm -hmm. during pregnancy, but also it's very healthy for the mom and the baby. It can also help make an easier, easier, faster, more comfortable delivery as well. Yeah. Well. Which I think every woman would want. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> And then with children, um, I get asked all the time, you know, when would a parent know to bring their child into a chiropractor? And what I always say is that children don't um, really exhibit the same kind of symptoms from a spinal misalignment that an adult would. They're not going to have the aches and pains or really express it the way that adults do. Mm -hmm. um, so the way that it usually shows up is more immune system type things. So ear infections, frequent colds, Difficulty sleeping or feeding, mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and That's interesting. What, what I'll do is check the check the child's spine. And again, like I said, can be the youngest I've adjusted is a three week old. Yeah. Um, so we'll check the spine, and then the adjustments are, of course, are very different than the way we would adjust an adult. Yeah. So very gentle. Mostly just using my pinky with just really light force. So they can't tell you anything either. Like right. a baby can't tell you like that. You know, that was, I've had, th I have, I've had three children. Yeah. All right. And they, they can't, when they're little, it can be so frustrating. You don't know what's wrong and they're crying and you can mm -hmm. tell they're in pain, you know, and you do all the basics and everything. But sometimes, you know, it's beyond that, you know. So it's, it, they can't tell you when they're uncomfortable. Right. Or I, sh I should say they do tell you, they just can't put it into words. Yeah. So. so that's interesting. I mean, I've seen it before, but I saw the pictures. I just yeah. thought it, look, it looked very sweet. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's really a lot of fun working on them. And we see results very quickly, again, because 
children don't have the stress and the tension and the muscle knots that adults do. So they actually respond very quickly. Yeah. So, okay, I want to change, uh, change okay. the track a little bit here. So you've been in business for four years, mm -hmm. all right? Um, has, it been, uh, has it been easy? Has it been wonderful? Like, have you had some challenges? Of course, it's all a learning experience. Um, it was my first time owning a business. Oh, wait, I want to ask you one more yeah. question before you start. Did you work for somebody first, or did you go right into no, your own? No, I just I started You started right your out. own. Wow, yep. okay, so you were gutsy. All right, <laughs> so you started out four years ago, yeah. Um, I'm actually, I'm fortunate to come from a entrepreneurial family. My parents um, own a company as well, so I grew up around the dinner table, really, most of the conversation in the house was always about the business and mm -hmm. how to run it and have employees and everything. What business did your f uh, father or um, parents it's have? It's General Communications out mm -hmm. of Woburn. Okay. So the... Uh, What's that? Um, business phone systems is okay. what they are. Right. Uh, and so your dad, so. that was his business yep. and everything. So you, you heard a lot, of, a lot of dinner conversation was around business, right? Exactly. So you grew up in that. So did I. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I kind of had that background, but of course, completely different business. So, um, and they give you some business courses in chiropractic school, but definitely not enough to really go out and run your business. So going to, you know, the Small Business Association and, mm -hmm. and different networking groups and kind of talking with other small business owners was mm -hmm. very helpful and just giving me the confidence in getting started and dealing with the when, little issues that come up. When you first started, um, so, how did you promote yourself? Like, what was the number one way you promoted yourself to get started? Because obviously, you, you start your practice, you have your office, you set up, all right, you have your tables, all the, everything you need to run a chiropractic mm -hmm. practice. How, how did, what was your number one way of getting customers to come in? Well, from day one, I put my ad in the North Reading transcript. Yep, good move. And I still have it in yeah, I see about it. every other week. <laughs> so I haven't let that go. That's yep. been very helpful. Um, it's great to be in a small town because a lot of my business um, is word of mouth. Yeah. So yeah. as as people find out about me and share with their friends and families. Yeah. Um, so the transcript was one. Um, just investing in a good website is helpful because yeah. um, people can schedule online. So that's really easy. Everybody likes that. Just mm -hmm. do things from their computer. That's very good. So so just say your website again. DeNeroChiropractic.com. Dot com. So you can go on there. I can go on there, and I've done this. I can go in, and I can. You'll have like openings in there, yep. right? And I can put an appointment in there. Yeah. Right. That's very, very useful. So you have a good, strong website that's very user friendly mm -hmm. that people can set up appointments. Um, okay. So it's so a website, transcript. What else? Um, networking was so big. So other networking. local businesses. So you went around and just said, I'm going to be here, uh, uh, this is my new business? Yeah, in different, um, different groups, so like the different BNI groups mm. um, okay, and yep. other kind of um, offshoots yeah. like that. So are you a member of the North Reading BNI group? I'm not right now. But you were when you started, right? Yep, yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, different, a couple different groups. So you, yeah. you, you, were, you were like on the ground, like yeah. you were on the ground out there just like handing out cards, telling people, meeting with people, networking, mm -hmm. good, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And h how was it the first like six months? Um, I was busier than I thought I was going to be, yeah. which was a pleasant surprise. Yeah. Um, and it just kept growing from there. So yeah, I remember, I mean, the, the day that my first ad went out in the transcript, I got two calls. So I was really happy about that. <laughs> yeah. Um, phone started ringing right away. And um, I mean, obviously I wasn't as busy seeing patients as I am now. So I had more time to, to go out and post little flyers or hold events. I yeah. used to hold um, like nutrition talks at the office yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. um, so just kind of more educational things a lot. So you gave your time out. So you would mm -hmm. do like a new, now did you speak on nutrition or did you have someone come yeah, in? You no, spoke. I would do it, yeah. All right, so how would you get like, how would you get people to come to that? Would you just tell people? So I had a meetup group, yeah. um, Nuts for Nutrition. Uh -huh. And um, yeah, we had a great group. We would have, you know, I remember. 15 people come yeah, in. Yeah. yeah. So people were coming in to, to hear about nutrition. And then, now were they, were they your patients? They weren't at the time. Okay. Yeah, so just outsiders. So outsiders coming in. Hey, let's hear about nutrition. Now, yeah. what would you say, how many patients would you get out of that? Like, would you get a couple? I would get a couple. Get a yeah. couple. All right. So, and how long would it take? About an hour? 
Um, you know, honestly, it would take longer than that. Everybody who came, everyone was really passionate about talking about nutrition and wanted to learn a lot. So, so it was it good. It would go on all night. Okay, that's good. <laughs> good. So it wasn't like people were like, mm, no. no. Yeah. <laughs> Can I just get I a had card to start and kicking go? people out. Yeah. All right. So that's good. But I mean, so you did a lot of grassroots stuff. Uh, you started, the phone started ringing, you know, that's what I tell, if you have a local business, you need to advertise in a yeah. local paper, because I get the transcript every week, I'm from North yeah. Reading, and every week I look at it, every yeah. week, every, you know, I see your picture in there, you know, we happen to be, have been in the same building for a while, yeah. uh, so I got to know you that way, but I would see it, and I, you know, I did the same thing, I run an yeah. ad in the transcript, you know, so the little, the little basics go a long way. Yeah. Now, you still do the transcript. Do you yeah. still do the nutrition groups or anything like that? Or I don't anymore. Um, part of it is is because I don't have the time that I used to. Yeah, yeah, which, which is, is a good. good thing. Yeah, um, nothing wrong with that. And also, you've been to the new office, so we don't have as much as a large common area mm -hmm. as I used to in the other space. Mm -hmm. um, so the waiting room can really only hold maybe about eight people or so. Yeah, yeah. So... In your practice, mm -hmm. you're you're the chiropractor. What else do you have in there? Like we have a massage therapist, yeah. um, which is great because they really go hand in hand, chiropractic mm -hmm. and massage. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times, you know, a patient will come in and and have a thirty or sixty minute massage, and then come in for an adjustment. And a lot of times, they're just a lot looser and it's a lot more comfortable, mm -hmm. um, and they really enjoy it. Okay, so you get chiropractor, massage, uh, anything else? Nope, that's it for that's right now. For right now. Any, yeah. What's on the, anything on the horizon? Like, uh, or, or are you okay where it is right now? I'm okay for right now. You never know where where things go. Um, kind of a larger wellness uh, clinic has always been in the back of my mind. So yeah. maybe at some point, um, more integrating more exercise type things. Mm -hmm. um, or acupuncture is really great too. Yeah. So we'll yeah. see where it goes. <laughs> but it's enough for right now. And um, you're married? Yes. When did you get married? We got married in September. Congratulations. Thank you. What's your husband's name? Curtis. Curtis, okay. And uh, it just, you know, I, I see Curtis, uh, I've seen him in the past, like he, he's, he's, uh, He's, he rolls up his sleeves, let's put it this uh, yep. He does with you, you know? <laughs> yeah, you're It right. helps you. Like, he, he, I've seen him at the, like, the meetings helping you. Yeah. And then I've seen him, you put him to work, too, right? That's right. <laughs> Even when, um, so when we moved into the new space, we did a gut renovation of the space. Yeah. Um, so he was the one tearing up the rug and punching down the walls and doing <laughs> the architecture of the whole new design. So... Yeah, he's very helpful with everything. Wow, so you got a lot going on. You got your new. Your, I mean, really, for the first five years of a business, that's all like that's new. Like you don't really become like really established mm -hmm. t until probably after the five year mark, you know, uh, and then ten years, you know. So you're like, there's a lot of like learning and growth and everything goes on in five years. I mean, you're yeah. there now, but you know, you're you're just getting to that first milestone of five years, yeah. you know, and then married too, so gonna have any kids eventually yeah <laughs> he owns his own business as well yeah. he has a real estate brokerage in in downtown boston yeah. so we're both busy i didn't mean to put you on the spot but <laughs> your, your mother was wondering <laughs> i know she asked me all the time <laughs> so i wanted to ask you a question so um purpose like you know i talked about i was kind of being a little silly but it was true when i was a Teen, a, a teenager in junior high, my purpose was to be popular, like most kids, you know, and I found an outlet for it. So you had an experience with a chiropractor. Do you, th do you feel like you have a purpose, too? Like when you wake up, like you smile a lot, all right, you're very happy. So I know that you do. Mm -hmm. You know, do you, do you care to share it with us? Yeah. Um, my purpose is, of course, helping people feel better because... Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to feel better and to live your life in pain, whether it's all the time or some of the time, can be miserable. Mm -hmm. So obviously making people feel better is wonderful. Um, but kind of going back to what we were talking about before with the, you know, the real doctors are the ones that prescribe medications. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love being um, an outlet for people or a resource, um, someone they can trust with their health care that's not so dependent on medication. A lot of people, you know, don't even like to take Advil. 
So yeah. to go to a doctor who's not just going to prescribe the muscle relaxers or pain medications is incredibly valuable. And, um, you know, to get really to the, the source of people's problems without that, without the medication is really what I feel my purpose is because we tend to be an over-medicated society yeah. and to help kind of combat that. I, think I, I hate taking medications. I absolutely hate yeah. it. Um, I have uh, in the past. I, I, you know, sometimes you have to, um, you know, and, but I don't like it. Mm -hmm. I want the alternative. Yeah. All right. I want the alternative. I had one time I had such tremendous neck pain. Mm -hmm. I couldn't even function. Mm. And I got prescribed uh, painkillers, um, steroids, muscle relaxers. None of it worked. Yeah. And I was like counting on it working and it wouldn't work. And after a while, like the painkillers really started to like mess with me. And yeah. I realized yeah. I was not like the same person. Somebody said it to me. They're like, what's yeah. wrong with you? And I go, nothing's wrong with me. They go, you're not acting the same. Mm. And I go, since when? And they were like, I don't know, like since a couple months? And I said, that's how long I've been taking the painkillers. Yeah. And that was really starting. So I stopped, you know. So that alternative to having that is really powerful. So that's a great purpose. Yeah. You know, a great purpose. Give someone an alternative and help someone feel better. Exactly. And like I said, I, I do work with everybody. But, you know, working with, obviously, the pregnant patients aren't going to want to take anything. You right. Know? Um, and pediatrics... A lot of parents hate the idea of, you know, just for an ear infection, giving antibiotics, and then it's over and over and over again. Yeah, so. it, it does sometimes go on forever. Yeah. You know? uh, and you, uh, you can take um, health insurance too, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yep. So that's good. That's a big plus. It didn't always used to be that way. I don't, right? Yeah. Am I right? No, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. So most insurance companies now do cover chiropractic, and, and we work with most major insurance companies so that's great that's yeah. good news all right so again just share with us where you can be found where can we go see you so the office is 350 park street suite number 106 in north reading massachusetts the phone number is 978-664-1500 and the website is denarochiropractic.com that's awesome okay so we got about a little bit over a minute and a half left okay. All right, so like, what, what would you like to share with somebody who wants to be a chiropractor? Like say somebody else, is a, there's a 15-year-old girl out there, she just got her braces off. But what do you say <laughs> to someone who wants to be a chiropractor? I would encourage to you know, look into, again, what it takes to be a chiropractor, you know, the course requirements that would be needed. Um, check out the schools. There are only, I think, about 12 or so schools in the country. Um, but really, it's, um, it's such a rewarding job. It's for the chiropractor and the patient. It's instant gratification in most cases. A lot of people walk out feeling wonderful with a big smile on their face, and there's nothing better than that, knowing that you've just made some, someone's day. All right, good. Now, what do you say to the person who's halfway through? Halfway and through school? Halfway through school, and they're burdened or having doubts, because everybody feels that way. What do yep. you say? You just got to keep pushing through. If it's something that you really want to do and, and you have that purpose behind it, use that purpose to reinvigorate you and, and get through school. It, it's not the easiest coursework, yeah. um, but it's definitely worth it. So one day at a time, right? Yep. One day at a time. And remember your purpose, because that's kind of like the theme of this show is mm -hmm. to remember your purpose while you do what you do. Yep. All right, Abby, thank you so much for being the guest today. Thank you. And thank you so much for helping me and my family. My pleasure. And uh, maybe we'll have you on again a little bit later on when you open the, the wellness. Perfect. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, everybody, that's the end of another Matt Lagore Show. You can check me out on The Matt Lagore Show on Facebook and uh, my YouTube channel, The Matt Lagore Show. Thanks for watching.